You're listening to Live Wild Radio, the part-time adventure podcast. Join us as we explore how outdoor adventures build mind, body, and spirit. Welcome back to this uh, numbered episode of Live Wild Radio, which I have no clue what it is. Uh, but what I do have a clue about is our favorite sponsor, Great Lakes Geria. Um You guys know we're huge into fitness. Uh, I've even bought more kettlebells. Um, so basically, they are the magical transformation tool, along with my cool Great Lakes Geria pull-up bar um, and my Amazon gymnastics rings. It's really the only big fitness thing that we didn't get from uh, Great Lakes. Uh, but when you want kick-ass fitness equipment, like maces, kettlebells, um, weights, all that kind of stuff, <clears throat> uh, with great prices, great quality, um, and Colin, who's the owner, is a strong first certified like kettlebell instructor and a bunch of different things and they teach classes too um, if you wanted to go do that sort of thing um, but you know how if you're a listener how important we find the cannonball with a handle so if you want to save on your fitness equipment um, in the new year uh, which is very apropos because everybody's doing the resolutions uh, go to greatlakesgearia.com um, use promo code Live Wild, and as a bonus, now instead of saving five percent, you're going to save ten yeah. percent. Like that's twice as many percents. <laughs> uh, and <clears throat> you know, like I said, we vouch for their gear. Um, we have at least twenty kettlebells in the basement. Do we really? I think so. It's huh. a lot. Yeah. You know. And you're starting to max out on the thirty-two what? kilo. Yeah, which is how much in pounds? Uh, 70? 70 pounds each hand. Yeah. I do a pair of them. Yeah. You know, because if you do both sides at the same time, sometimes I do one arm things for, you know, that asymmetrical loading. Yeah. You know, I'll do one side and then do the other. But yeah. a lot of it's double kettlebell stuff because then you have to lift twice as much at once. Mm-hmm. Right. So if you're pressing it, it's the same. You know, each shoulder's getting it. But if you're pressing two, your legs have to support more. Your hips have to drive more to clean them. If you're squatting them, you're squatting twice as much. Uh, I'm a big fan. They're they're um, big, black, evil instruments of that's strength. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're teaching the kids. That's what she said jokes. And we don't uh, even watch The Office much. No. Um, yeah. So... Uh, <clears throat> Thank you for, is it almost two years with Great Lakes? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. You yeah. Um, yeah. And I think we're coming up to th- three or four with us. Yeah. Yeah. It was this time-ish, December, I don't know. 2019. Got to go check my tax return. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you want to be able to write off your trips, start a podcast. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, that's sort of our... Uh, fiscal advice to yeah. people uh, another exciting partner that we've uh, really enjoyed connecting with is cool cool makes clothing and uh, it's an american company but uh we've uh been testing out their winter hiking pants and i have the clash cool pants and uh what do you have the radical they're pretty cool eh um i mean uh, <laughs> cool. yeah <laughs> <laughs> Mom jokes. Um, I actually didn't mean to do that. That's what, that's what makes it funny. Um, <clears throat> so uh, really well-made pants, uh, tough as shit, lots of great features. Yeah. You know, like I, you know, I'm a hot fellow. Mm-hmm. Mine have side zips for ventilation. Yeah. You know, when I'm, when I'm emitting a, a, a bit too much heat from my, my thick thighs, um, it cools them down a little bit. They design them for you? Yeah. With you in mind? Um, and then cinches at the bottom and... Uh, they have the little um, hooks to hook onto your uh, gators your or gators. your boots. They your they, boots. Be, they become gators in a sense. Yeah, they do. So actually. they don't ride up on you. Yeah, and the women's uh, great material, uh, very thin but warm, and they also have um, um, pockets, which you don't see a lot of pockets, side pockets, aside from what you have at your waist, but on your thigh. Yeah, for women, um, sort of cargo, which is fits your phone. 
Um, that's been a real challenge in the past, is yeah. having that. But Well, that's why you buy guy pants sometimes. Yeah. Like your that has been pants. exactly why. But well, aside from the fact that at one point I couldn't fit into women's, but properly. But yeah, the guy pants, I love them because of the pockets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're very nice. And uh, I think mine retail for about, I don't know, 150 Canadian, yeah. something like that. They're worth it. Yeah. I'd say they're really high quality. Yours about, I don't know, it's 200 American. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but very, uh, you, you wear them all the time. Yeah. And they um, look good on you too. Yeah. Or maybe I make them look good. <laughs> but I'm pumped. Um, <laughs> Because back to those kettlebell squats. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be doing a blog on that about yeah. those particular, if you want to learn more about them. Yeah, but something so. to consider. Check out Cool. Yeah. And uh, I think we're going to probably partner with them and put something out as well. Yeah. Uh, get a promo code and all that kind of jazz. Yeah. Um, so we want to thank Cool for sending us some pants to test out. Yes. Uh, and review. Um, and, and it is nice because like I knew about Cool already because we sell it at the store. Mm-hmm. Um but they, they were always one of these brands where just they were just known for making a shit kicker tough stuff. Yeah, you can tell. You know, really good seams, good materials. Yeah, um, solid. And they look very outdoorsy. Yeah, they're uh, really nice. But you could also wear them out to dinner, mm-hmm. like at a pub or <laughs> other non-black tie kind of places. Yeah. Um, you know, with your puffy coat and... Uh, that look. Yeah, that modern... I'm affluent look. I guess. I wrote a really cool article for one of my clients. Yeah. um, On uh, outdoors and high fashion and how they've come together. Oh, I've talked. We talked about this. Oh, we did? Well, yeah. I've been saying that since uh, the pandemic's happened, when people go back, people are, are looking for, everybody's more casual. Yeah. Right. So where in the past you might have had to have been more business casual, now you can actually do the outdoorsy casual. Oh, okay. I've seen that. Yeah. yeah I've seen a lot of more Patagonias and whatever, you yeah. know, Arteryx. Well, and it was... I've seen more business casual clothing with Arteryx labels on them. Yeah. Arteryx is actually going, hey, wait a second. We can make a certain amount of money selling yeah. high performance gear. But now that we've been doing it long enough that people want to buy the Little Bird logo. Yeah. Then we'll just put it on a sweater, casual clothes. Yeah. And people will, it sort of, if you know, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like an outdoorsy Gucci logo. It is. And it's a way, especially when you have limited social time, right? Meeting people and you're trying to figure out who you actually want to have lunch with. <laughs> Seriously, I would, I would totally scut those. Out. I yeah. pay attention to those people. I'm like, okay, they do something. Let's go talk. Yeah. What do you do? Oh, yeah. you do this? Oh, you. Oh, okay. So I won't have lunch with you, but, <laughs> but you, you climb or you do this or you do that, you know, and then, yeah. yeah. And it basically, it, it almost is like a secret code it to is. be able to talk to people It is without being too weird. Right. It's, you know, they're smart. Yeah. Um, if I was in the fashion industry, I would have picked up on that. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting. Right like away. one of the things in my research for my article was that, uh, outdoors rec- recreation really started with rich people, like the uber rich, mm-hmm. you know, the, the Rockefeller type people back in the day. Okay. Um, and so subsequently, now if you are outdoorsy, generally it means you're fairly affluent mm-hmm. because you have the money for gear, you have the money to travel, mm-hmm. and you have free time. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because I can remember, you know, I've been outdoorsy my whole life, but I remember times... You didn't have a job. That's why you could be outdoorsy. Well, yes. But but I also remember times where, you know, when I was working and broke, yeah, I didn't have as many opportunities to do outdoorsy things yeah, because I didn't have neither the time... Uh, the money for gear or, or, or the money. <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh, so, basically, if you're outdoorsy, it puts you in... Um, you know, and actually you do outdoors things, it actually puts you, you know, if you're ever sort of feeling bad about your lot in life, it actually puts you into like uh, throat history among the most affluent people out there. <laughs> you know, so that's uh, something to brighten your day with. Yeah. 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 And that so, segues really well in today's episode. It does. It does. We're going to be talking all about um, winter survival. Yeah. We've had a couple of our own experiences, um, but there's a lot of important tips to think about. And uh, really, when it comes to winter and the cold, that you know can be quite 
uh, life or death situations. Yes, because Mother Nature does not give a fuck about you. <laughs> <laughs> nope, neither do the mountains. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it it and that it's kind of a funny thing as far as the segue about the affluence because all the stuff you need for winter is more expensive than what you need for summer. Yeah. Well, sleeping bags are more money because yeah. they're warmer. Tents are more money because they're heavy duty. Yeah. yeah. So if you're winter camping, yeah, and even clothes. In summer, all I'm wearing is shorts and a and a wicking t-shirt, and I'm good to go. Yeah. So. So there you go. Yeah. So if you're a winter uh, outdoorsy person, you're even more affluent. <laughs> Not to beat a dead horse, but you know. So, so let's get on to uh, a little bit of winter activities first. And then we'll sort of talk I'm about... I'm curious more about what you've been up to. I mean, not me, but I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this. That oh, we, we did. We talk about what we've been... <laughs> but you, you transitioned into the, the episode already. You started it. No, 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 no. That was you. You said, what are we going to talk about? You started it. I'm like, okay, is this what he wants to do? All right, but then I'll... you should have said, well, let's talk about what we've been up to lately. Well, that's why I mentioned it now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Circling back. Yeah. Kind of like I'm a comedian. Well, or you're yeah. a comedian. Well. You know, you're doing the, the closer. Or Am the, I? Whatever it's called. I forget. Um, <laughs> yeah. So so let's go through that. Over the last uh, few months. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, probably the biggest thing for me, you know, aside from obviously working. And I thought you were going to ask me. Well, you asked me. No, I, no. no, no. Oh, you, did I? Yeah, I did. You go. did. All right. What have you been doing <laughs> for the last few months? Um, I thought he was like, oh, it's all about me now. <laughs> no, a, lo- a lot of day drinking, I guess, is what we've been doing. Um, yeah, like because it's uh, fall, winter. Well, really, I, I say fall, winter. It's technically the time of year that would be categorized as winter. But all we have is shit late fall weather right now. Yeah. Um, so we haven't been able to do a lot of winter activities. No. Um, you know, so I say thank God for having my gym in the basement. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been doing my kettlebells and my pull-ups and my fingerboard and my push-ups and uh, lots of walking and loaded carries and, you know, a variety of different things. Uh, so my fitness is coming along quite well. And, yeah, And I have a nice selection of tight black t-shirts now. You do? You know, that Catherine seems to enjoy. Yeah. She's like, you got to get some t-shirts that fit. Yeah. And, you know, and then I've been head out on work wearing them. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. You know. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> to the woman in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what have you been up to? I have been up to drumming. I just bought my drum set. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, used one. It's a Pearl, Pearl Vision. Yeah. Black. And black uh, hardware too. Like it, she yeah. looks like she's got a drum kit from uh, that would be and a double kick drum pedal. Yes. So really, Catherine is, wait, where did I go? I just disappeared for a second on uh, the audio there. Um, uh, basically, Catherine is set up to play death metal. I am. And it sounds great. You know, that digga, 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 you know. Yeah. And stuff about Satan and sacrificing babies. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm just coming up with the lyrics here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, so how I got into it was over the pandemic. I started watching YouTube videos of uh, just, you know, people breaking down um, music. Music and whether it be singing or the entire song or, and I think I just noticed the piece on drumming, of course, Phil Collins, but um, but others, I, I, I'm not, a, I don't have a musical background at all. So I've never really appreciated that. And I just found it very interesting. So since I've been watching those, those, um, who, YouTube who, videos, who got you into that? Um, YouTube. YouTube did. <laughs> you did. That, that's my name is YouTube. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I I found myself a little bit obsessed of that when I would listen to a song in the car, I'd be like trying to break it down. Yeah, and I couldn't stop. And I think maybe I need to get a drum set. I'm like, uh, maybe not because I don't want that be, to become a clothes rack, right? I didn't think I, but it, the curiosity was always there and quite strong. So I thought, all right, I'm gonna go to Long McQuaid, our music store, and see uh, what they have and if they have any used kits. I was prepared to go buy something, but I'm like. 
you know what? I just don't want to have all something taking up space if I don't use it. So I'm going to Especially because it's in our gym now. So we lost a, a, <laughs> a bit of real estate. Yeah. Well, it's in an area that we didn't really use. So it was where the couch was going to go. Yeah. But no. A futon. Now now we the have drum no room. sides there. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm making use of the carpet that was rolled up. So that's perfect. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I got into it and stuck with it. Um, really enjoy it. There's some great resources and it's coming along. And yeah. but I think I also did it too, not only because I was just interested in it, and but it's a great way to um, for my memory. Yeah. To, uh, it's new coordination. It's uncoordinated, coordinated uncoordination, right? <laughs> Um, you got to have all four limbs doing different shit. Yeah. So it's definitely good for forming new neural pathways yep. in your brain. And I feel like that could help me because I tend to be very forgetful and just keeping your mind active. Mm-hmm. And it's a beautiful thing. And so the kids, Hudson's really in particular interested in it yep. as well. So yeah, I'm really enjoying that. That's been about, I don't know, three months that I've had yeah, three it. Or four. But a month I didn't do anything with it, but I'm back into it. I'm pretty much craving it yeah so i can be upstairs and i'm surprised it doesn't ever we've never heard anything from our neighbors you think yeah i may ask them i mean my next the one neighbor said no but yeah i'm I'm, i feel like i'm wailing on them now a little bit more you know especially at night but i'm in the basement so who knows and you got that that mattress behind you actually dampens a lot of sound yeah i think it does Yeah. yeah But it's true, like when you're in front of me, I hear it a lot yeah. louder. And I wear my earplugs, thank God, because I, I did notice it's probably a good idea. Yep. So, yeah, so that's pretty cool. And then I've also, I guess bad news is my, um, so I've gained a bit of weight, significant amount actually, about 20, 25 pounds. My mom passed away. So um, that was in July and there was some, quite a bit of activity around her and taking care of her. I fell off the track eating a lot more carbs and so and then with travel with work I, I found myself gaining weight each time I think like 15 pounds in three months so it's quite a bit mm-hmm. and um and I think it's really hit me and it's really bothered my knees so my knees I found uh have really really um been problematic and I'm trying to get into I believe it. the technical term is gone to shit yeah just your one knee yeah, yeah. Uh, people know this, but um, I think about ten years ago, I was already diagnosed or I, uh, with a uh, stage four osteoarthritis in my right knee. So, anyway, um, it's probably coming near to that time. They said by fifty, I'm forty, going to be forty eight soon. Um, it'll probably need to be replaced. So, anyways, I find that I can't really walk as much, which is pretty scary. So here's a, a strong PSA announcement. <laughs> you know, take care of yourself. And so what I'm doing is I need to get the weight off. So I've been focusing on that, but I've started riding, riding my bike, the trainer. So I'm actually making use of the trainer in the basement. Um, in how many years since I've had it? And, uh, it's actually, you got, you've had it for over two years. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you got it, you got it early in the pandemic. I got it at the old apartment. Yeah. The, Two bedroom apartment. Yeah. So anyways, um, yeah, it was early in the pandemic. Um, so the bright side is I have found that by to your um, so from per your suggestion to get on it starting with 30 minutes a day, light, mm-hmm. light riding, low gears, uh, heart rate. So it's aerobic. And essentially that's pumped a lot of blood, I think, through the joint area yep. and it's helped relax, heat it up, you know, like loosen everything up. And then you stretch. Um, it's been really good for it. It's also been good for my ankle that's mm. been gacked up. So it makes things more as they should be. And um, that seems to have really helped. So that'll transition nicely for the summer because, um, well, in April, we're going to go on a bike touring trip. Um in the States. We don't know where yet. It'll be a road trip. Yeah. We're working out the details of where we're going to go because the way I figure is that we both like cycling and, uh, if we're going to hike, I want it to be in hillier mountainous terrain. If we're going to go anywhere Mm -hmm. and Catherine's knees will just, the one knee will explode. Um, and I'll hear no end to it. It's like my knee hurts and it hurts some more and then it's ow and stuff. I just won't be able to walk. Yeah. Yeah. And then I got to carry her around like a, you know, uh, I'll have to look at uh, his bright sides of like, oh, look, more loaded carries. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't want that much. The sandbag. Yeah. Um, you know, 
Uh, but because you can ride pain free. Exactly. Yeah. As long as there isn't any aggressive hills, even though we're taking the mountain bikes. Yeah. Yeah. You know. To start and then go from there. But, but if I'm cycling every day and, and I can get it to an hour, mm-hmm. right? Like maybe even I break it up, which will be great for movement. Because I have to replace my walking. Yeah. I can't walk a lot because it really irritates it. It gets really swollen. And so, and I got to go to Disney <laughs> in February. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to Disney World in February. In a month. And uh You'll hear if you gotta rent one of those scooters, you'll hear no end of it. I'm not doing from, that. Oh no. You know, from I'd the ra- kids. I'd rather do the disability. It's like, Mom <laughs> uh, can you go can you go run and give me a drink? You got a scooter, it's fine. Yeah. You got a basket, you can bring us all snacks. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, um, that's going to be fun, but mm-hmm. we'll figure it out. So that's what's been going on. It's the yeah. truth. I feel like I'm whining about it, but it's reality. Yeah. And well, no, you're not super whining. Like, like, there's plenty of times, like, off air you've been whiny about it, but um, <laughs> it's humor, babe. Uh, but in this case, not particularly. You're just stating that, you know, it turns out that the doctor from 10 years ago uh was right i don't like him yeah <laughs> i never liked him he just seemed to be but i started swimming yeah and actually this is a lot of fun too so uh i've never taken swimming lessons i've always just been t- thrown in the pool and said go swim you float so it's not a big I'm a, deal i'm a good floater yeah <laughs> not like you um but i'm ex- i've always been excited to try and um try that again because i love swimming in, in a lake but i know i don't do it efficiently and so i learned how to do a crawl uh stroke Crawl, front sp- crawl front crawl thank you with your head in the water and uh breaststroke as well bobbing up and down out of the water so it's really cool and i think these are fun things to get into even from an outdoor adventure perspective like mm-hmm. just being able to do a lot more swimming and getting training for that um and it's good on my knee so if anybody's in the same situation um she just wants to get out of doing all her strength training. I think that's what it is. No, I did it. I did it the one day. I just haven't. Yeah, I got to get back into it. But I did do it the one day. I just skipped doing the squats for now just yeah. because my knees were so bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I'm able to do. There's a, I mean, how many times do you see like climbers with a broken leg and they're still climbing? Yeah, with the cast on. Yeah, like, they're doing other things. Yeah. So you just work around it. And the nice thing about climbing, and I went back to that, is if you're roped, you're not worried about falling. Mm-hmm. So, well, you're not. Yeah, I'm talking about, yeah, not lead climbing. I'm yeah. just talking about rope climbing. Yeah. So, so there's ways around it. Mm-hmm. And, and it really comes down, you, I think, have learned finally motion is lotion. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And, and I, I'm sure a lot of people listening to this probably work from home. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they do, or they sit long periods of time, but especially when you're working, so bad for you. And I think people are starting to experience that now. You just got to get up and move every half hour or even an hour. Movement snacks. Yeah. Like yeah. I've been I've been advocating that forever. You know. I know, but it's, you get into a mode, right? And you don't want to break that concentration. So I suppose. That's right. You got, the, but you built stuff into your calendar now, your day calendar at work. Yeah, I bet you'd be more progress, um, productive too if you say to yourself, okay, in 20 minutes, because in 25 minutes I'm going to get up and move, I've got to do this. Yeah. So you'd be super focused rather than kind of like, la, la, la. Yeah, like, <laughs> but if you if you give right. yourself deadlines to get stuff done, yeah. you get more done. Yeah. And then basically instead of, you know, fucking off, you're going to do a bit of activity. Yeah. So... On that note, I think we've just spent like 20 minutes just shooting the shit. Yeah, well, you <laughs> I'm know. I'm looking at my watch. But uh, let's get on with today's topic. Yeah, so, of winter survival. Yeah. So tell us a story of when you're in a holy shit moment. Uh, I fell through a frozen lake. So when, where, how uh, old? A long time ago. Because at a certain, and uh, at listeners, I don't know if you run into this, but at a certain point, um. Things have had like you're you're old enough that things uh, fall into. I was a kid. I was uh, an adult. Uh, it happened recently. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you were a kid. No, oh, you were an adult. I was adult. a I was a an adult somewhere in there. Yeah, like a young adult. Yeah. Um. 
but I can't tell you, you know, was I 20, was I 30? That's fine. You know. Um, but, yeah, it was just winter camping, crossing a, a frozen lake. And was uh, it at the start of the frozen lake, or you were in the middle of the lake, or uh, a fair ways in, like definitely above your head? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, when I fell in, I went under. Like, uh, head, head and under? Oh, yeah, like Holy ice shit. cream headache. Oh, shit. Um, with that, must back, been, that must have been pretty scary. Um, <sighs> yeah, like, it's funny, like... E- e- because uh, it's not like you know you're going to fall in and you unclip your backpack. No, no. Um, no, but the thing is, I, I already had, and this I'll get to, uh, I already had spikes hanging off my wrists because mm-hmm. I knew you're crossing a lake. Mm-hmm. Um, and what it was is that uh, there was a ton of snow. And I guess the snow had insulated on top. Mm. And it just, you know, in the sort of this area, maybe there was a current underneath. Yeah. Um, and it just wasn't frozen, frozen thick enough. Mm-hmm. Um, because a few feet the other way was fine. A few feet the other way was fine. Oh, know? really? So it's just that one area. You know, like basically because. Because when you got out. Uh, well, I got out back in the direction um, I'd come from. Right. Because I knew it was fine because I'd been there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But it was a thing. It was like, think about uh, dumping a bucket of ice water over your whole body and then punching yourself in the dick. (laughs) That's pretty much what it feels like. Oh, my God. Um, You know. You lose your breath. Yeah. And then it was just like uh, sort of quick dunk, head back up. But I got snowshoes on my feet. Um, And... It was a case where with the, because I already had the picks hanging off my wrists, mm-hmm. um, I just sort of grabbed those and got one in. Mm-hmm. And it's good that you don't uh, need much fine motor control because your hands are frozen, everything's soaked. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it wasn't super cold. It was like single negative digits, like minus five, something like that. Okay. So it wasn't crazy cold. Yeah. Because um, had it been crazy cold, the ice would probably be <laughs> thicker. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it was basically just a case of, you know, get both spikes in. Now, were you facing, was your belly facing the exit, like um, the ice that you were trying to get on top of? Or were you doing it in backwards? Or I guess so. I guess you would have done it from belly. Yeah, you have to do belly. You have to do it that way. Um, so, but where, you know, I basically came up above the water, got up. One in, yeah, just so I wouldn't go back under, yeah, and then I sort of quickly looked around to get a feel of where I was, mm-hmm. figuring going in the direction that I'd fallen, yeah, you know, and I just probably wasn't the smartest thing, so I just worked my way around, and on my belly, you know, you just sort of you're basically doing a pull up to drag your ass out of the water, yeah, because you don't want to just stand up, you'll fall through again, you know, um, and how do you get out with snowshoes? Uh, I just bent my legs, uh-huh. like because uh, you know it obviously opened up a fair size hole. Mm-hmm. Um, so once my belly was up, I just bent my legs like I did a leg curl. Oh, okay. And then just keep your feet out of the water, and or... then belly dragged myself. Yeah. And then you can put your uh, when you got snowshoes on, if you extend your feet, mm-hmm. you know uh. You can pretty much put the top of your feet flat down on the ice, mm-hmm. or in this case, the snow. Yeah. Um, and then it was just a case of like, once I was fully out, then I just sort of did the army crawl. Yeah. Forward a ways, you know, on my yeah. elbows and knees, you know, keeping my belly down, so I was spreading the load out. Uh, before I stood up, and then it was just a case of, uh, I was out with another guy, mm-hmm. and was he ahead of you or behind you? Uh, he was behind and to the side. Okay. Because you never walk in a row Mm -hmm. on the ice. Mm -hmm. Spread yourselves out. Mm -hmm. Because if you're walking in a row and you're close together, if one falls through, you might both fall through. Right. You know? Um, and so then it was just a case where, uh, he'd, as I was sort of dragging myself out, he'd already gotten, uh, like pulled out a rope. Yeah. 
uh, to toss to me, but I just didn't need it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm soaked. I get up and we just sort of make a big arcing loop back to the shore mm-hmm. um, just to go around, you know, so that we're not anywhere near uh, where I broke through. Yeah. And, you know, it's basically just a case of like a lot of tensing and flexing and moving and, rah, you know, on my part. <laughs> um, to keep warm. Yeah. Because you're soaked right to the bone. But yeah. you're, you've got clothes that will dry quickly. Yeah. Um, and uh, luckily it wasn't super windy out. Mm-hmm. Um, the wind would have sped up how quickly I dried, but it would also speed up how quickly you get chilled. Yeah. Um, and because, you know, it's pretty hard going, especially once we got back to shore and you're just in fresh snow. Yeah. Um, tromping through the woods uh, is a good way to generate heat. Mm-hmm. You know, your your feet are like icicles. Oh, yeah. Right? Your hands, you know, because you got waterproof boots on, so they've flooded. Um, they actually weren't as bad because I had like, you know, Gore-Tex pants on. Mm-hmm. And... Hmm. A, the combination, like I, I was wet all the way through, but not as saturated if, in places, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, and yeah, then it was just a case of tromp around. Um, luckily, we have coniferous trees like crazy mm-hmm. in our forests. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was breaking off uh, low dead branches because the, the first thing you got to do is get a fire going. Yeah. Um, and it's why... Uh, you always have a fire kit with you, whether it's a day trip or backpacking. Mm-hmm. Um, and looking at uh, any evergreens um, that are mature, the low dead branches are dry. Like mm-hmm. if they give a nice clean crack when you break them, mm-hmm. they're dry inside. Mm-hmm. So you're literally just going through, and you've done this with me before. You know, you're a little slower, you know, you're taking your time doing it. Mm-hmm. But it's like pushing through the bush and it's like there's a tree and there's a whole bunch of dead branches of all different sizes on the bottom. Yeah. And you're just like snap, 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 snap. And you're just bundling them up. Well, it's even um, because all the sap is drawn is come out of the trees, right? Um, a lot of the live trees, too, you think are dead, but they're not. So mm-hmm. it's sometimes a little bit confusing if when they don't have leaves. Um, but that's what's great about the evergreens. Mm-hmm. Right, they're uh, if they have no needles, they're dead. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, right. But um, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty significant because you have realistically in those kind of temperatures. How much time do you have before you go hypo- get hypothermia? Um, once you, like you've got a minute to two minutes once you're in the water, right? Like it's happening quickly, mm-hmm. but. Once you're out of the water and then generating heat, mm-hmm. um, uh, like you're cold, but you know, as long as you don't stand still, it was the initial dunk was like, whoa, you know, yeah. Um, but once I dragged myself out and got just that, you know, real moving, mm-hmm. like I was booking it, yeah. Um, that. It was cold, but like there was just steam coming off of me. Um, well, survival mode. Yeah, uh, and I and think I, I think I, my big layer of fur um, helps. <laughs> and I think too, um, when you're in that adrenaline rush of a situation, you don't hurt as much as you would if yeah. you weren't. You know, what I mean? so if you—that's how I walked away from so many fights in my life. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so. like it doesn't hurt till tomorrow. Um, how long did it take to, so you got back, I'm just curious, you got back to the camp, you made a fire. Not to camp, just to shore. To shore. So you made two fires. So you could be like a, like a pig. Now, now, because you've already heard this story. Mm -hmm. You know, most people wouldn't think of that, but yes. Yeah. No, you've talked about that on another story. Oh, okay. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So I've never heard how you got out of this one, um, but that's what you did. Yeah. But the nice thing is by having somebody else there too, Mm -hmm. um, they, I just sort of focused on grabbing wood, mm-hmm. right? Um, because starting a fire can require a little bit of dexterity, and mine was shot. My hands were just not moving properly. Yeah, right. Um, 
So it's a case where all I did had to work on was just smash Hulk smash, you know, as far as breaking branches, yeah, and keeping making burning energy as yeah. much as possible um, to keep warm. And yeah. luckily, we had uh, a thermos with us with hot chocolate in it, mm. so I would sip some of that down too. Yeah, um, and then I would just put candy in my mouth <laughs> as I was going, just so because I'm burning up so much energy. Yeah. I'm trying to get some back in. So yeah. something my body will metabolize quickly and yeah. turn to heat. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was a case where uh, basically the guy I was with got the fire going. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, I came back with another big bundle and dumped it on top of the fire. Mm-hmm. Um and that's when then I took my gloves off to start warming up my hands. Um, and he went out to get more wood, right? So one of us were always out getting wood. Um, once once we got the fire going, mm-hmm. then he basically just kept feeding wood. Mm-hmm. Um, and because the first thing he did was, a, you know, with a shovel, like clear back snow enough so you were down halfway to the ground. Right. You know, because you don't want to start a fire on top of two feet of snow. Mm-hmm. Um, and once, uh, he got the one fire going and then I put a big bundle, you know, like an arm load of like twigs, small branches, uh, all of that on top, mm-hmm. then he went out for more. Um, and that's the point at which I took off my top layers, mm-hmm. um, took off my snowshoes, mm-hmm. uh, took off my top layers, um, and put dry stuff on. Yeah. Um, From him. Because I... Oh, no. Your backpack, too, would have been... Everything... My clothes are all dry. Because yeah. I keep them in a dry bag in, the, yeah. in my backpack. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, my puffy jacket, my... You know, I put another base layer on, a fleece on, a hoodie on, uh, a puffy jacket on with a hood... Mm-hmm. A toque, mm-hmm. you know, put some dry gloves on. Yeah. Um, and the Gore-Tex pants did a pretty good job. Like, obviously, some water got in, mm-hmm. but I wasn't as wet mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. in the pants, like below the waist as I was above. It yeah. was wet, but not soaked. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, basically, we got this one fire nicely established. Um, and then we built one about six feet away. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I could be between the two of them. So both sides were getting warmed up. Yeah. Um, cause that's always true, right? When you're at a fire, it's just the front side. Yeah. You, you basically have to rotisserie yourself, Yeah, <laughs> you know, turning yeah. in a circle like you're a flawful meat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, so that, that was basically, I just sort of stayed there, dried all my stuff out. Um, uh, put a, a bit of tarp down so I could stand on it because mm-hmm. um, I wanted to take my boots off to let them dry out. Right. Um, uh, you know, I always have a foam pad in the wintertime um, to add to your sleeping pad. Mm-hmm. So I was standing on that. Like we had tarp down and then a mm-hmm. uh, foam pad. Um, and that's what I was standing on so my feet weren't freezing. Um. And then once you're dry, what did you guys do? Did you keep moving or are you moving? Or no, you just then we made camp because I was... Yeah, you're, you're spent. I was exhausted. Yeah, you need to get um, rest and continue to be warm. And, and eat a whole bunch of food. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then it was basically because then we, we set up camp. Yeah. Um, got a bunch of hot food in, a lot of drinks. Um, and then I basically zonked out for 12 hours <laughs> you're what zonked out for about 12 hours yeah interesting you know um and i when i woke up the next day i felt worked did you like like uh, you know kind of the the feeling i would get like after doing like an eight hour mountain bike race yeah you know and it's like you wake up the next day and it's like oh man i'm just so fucking tired of my body yeah holy shit <laughs> well you're yeah yeah Working hard. Yeah. It's interesting. You know. So so a few of the takeaways I would always... First, if you're ever on a frozen lake, get ice picks. They're, mm. They hang around your wrists. Um, like when you're just carrying them, they actually connect together so the two picks aren't sticking out. 
um, a lot of the ice fishing companies like Rapala and, um, you know, uh, uh, Eskimo and, you know, they make ice fishing equipment. Mm -hmm. Um, they make these picks, um, and they have wrist loops. So if you're ever out on the ice, you should always have a pair of these on you. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have time to dig around for them if you fall through the ice. If you had fallen through the ice and you didn't have them, do you think you'd still be able to get out? Uh, well, that's why he was getting the rope out to throw to me. Yeah. Um, and I don't think we've ever taken rope with us. Like, well, I mean, you have your tent rope, right? Well, that's, yeah, those are tent guidelines. Yeah. That, it's strong enough, like a paracord. Yeah. But, but that's what I'm talking about. Like, it's not, I don't, I don't really think I've ever thought about that for a winter. Um, I've had a throw country. rope with me in my bag before. Have like you? a like a kayak. Well, I certainly didn't know about it. Um, yeah, it like those yellow ones, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, because that it's just useful, you know. Sure is, yeah. Um, uh, what I'd had actually with us was the like uh, accessory cord we use climbing. Um, you know, it's strong enough, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's big enough for me to. If you fell through, Mm -hmm. I toss you a loop, you get a hand through it. That's true. I need you to just pull. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I I don't need to pull you out. I just need to keep you from slipping. Mm -hmm. Right. So as you wiggle, Mm -hmm. I'm just applying enough traction that you can, you know. Yeah. um, And that's sort of the key. It's like you're not dragging the person out. You want to. Yeah. Just. Yeah. Just assist them. I think another key thing we've talked about before is the kind of clo- material that in the clothing that you bring. It should always be things that are synthetics. That, or, or wool. Or wool. Like things um, that will keep you warm when they're wet. Yeah. And will also dry quickly yeah. when you need them to. Right. Because cotton does not. And uh, um, and that's a tricky thing, right? When you're in the winter, it's kind of a bit of a segue. But um, before we do, I will try and find a link to a video where a guy actually practices falling through through the the water going Mm -hmm. through the ice and he does it in water that's up to his chest or yeah well and that's the thing too that i want to tell people i had done this voluntarily before okay so just like the you know the video Mm -hmm. we we'd done that Mm -hmm. um like a couple years earlier Hmm. so um worthwhile doing well yeah because you know what it's like and you know what to do Mm -hmm. right it's like anything don't think you know how to defend yourself when the mugger shows up. Yeah. Train. Yeah. You know, um, whatever whatever situation it is, you're going to fall back to the level of your training. Yeah. And if you have no training, you're fucked. Yeah. Right? So, and it doesn't have to be like elaborate training from some special coaches, but it's just practicing a skill. Right? So first you have less of a fear response because you're familiar with what's happening. Mm-hmm. Right, like anything entirely new out of the blue that wasn't expected mm-hmm. is very jarring. Mm-hmm. But if you've done it before and mm-hmm. you're like, oh, yeah, it sucks, but yeah, you can get over the shock a little bit, yeah, more, quickly. you know, yeah. Um, and yeah. it's like anything the first time you do it, you're like, oh my god, I don't know. Uh. But think about like even like you know, multi pitch rock climbing. Mm-hmm. First time you did it, you shit your pants. Well, you didn't shit your pants, I but my pants. You know, um, <laughs> I had to go. Yeah, and you know, you dropped your shiwi. Uh, but then it's like other times, you know, subsequent times you've gone, you're like, okay, and this is what we're doing. You yeah. know, you're much calmer because it's not un- unknown. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but I'll try and find that video so that you can see how they do it, and and why not try it in yeah. a safe environment, right? Yeah. Um, Near shore, uh, heaters or blankets, towels, (laughs) like you have everything ready. Yeah. You know, once you get out. Yeah. And and I think the other piece to it is going into clothing. It's like Mm -hmm. like weighing into that. Um, Huge. Whenever, so in the winter, the thing that you're dealing with is um, managing your... um, Moisture? Moisture management. Yeah. Yeah. Because... Often you'll start off backpacking, hiking, whatever you're going to do for the day so that you're warm enough where you, you need to actually start off cold because you're going to build heat mm-hmm. and you're going to start to sweat. Yeah. So if you've started off warm, you're going to sweat. In then no your time. clothes are going to get wet. 
So you can imagine that when it comes time to taking a break, you're not going to be hiking all the time. You're going to stop and you're all wet and now you're cold because yeah. <laughs> you're not moving anymore. So uh, whereas if you start off cold, you, you know, you're usually at the, a better um, temperature that you can sustain and yeah. not be sweating because you're trying to reduce that. Yeah, because like basically it's like you want to start going, oh, I could use a sweater. <laughs> yeah. And in five minutes. You just start to move. Yeah, in five minutes you'll be fine. Yeah, and if you do find, even though you've got your backpack on and you're going to go camping in the winter, um, but you're hot, you gotta you got to start to unlayer, yeah. you know, and that, or that, opening up your jacket or whatever. You have to really get on that right away. Yeah, don't let yourself get warm and um, wet. Yeah. Because then you'll be wet and cold. <laughs> Yeah, and if you do have synthetics and wool, right, these things will dry quickly. Will wool dry quickly wet? Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah. Not not quite as quick as the synthetics, but... Yeah, and they really but, do, because I've taken things that are just damp, and when I go to bed, put them in my, at the bottom of my... Uh, sleeping bag. Sleeping bag on the inside, and the heat, the heat from my body dries everything. So, um, really key. I think the other thing that's um, interesting about the w- winter is... Um, you're never really, you know how like in the summer you're hot and you're thirsty. In the winter, I find you can get dehydrated more easily. Yeah, because you're not thirsty. You're just not because you're, you know, you're enjoying the temperatures generally if you're not, if you're warm. And um, yeah, you got to watch that. So I remember I was, I ran out of water. I started trying to eat snow and of course you can't eat enough of it mm. to get what you need. But yeah, do you, should you also take electrolytes in the winter? Um, if you're sweating a lot, if you're sweating, a lot, you know, basically yeah. because most in the winter, most, uh, if you're, if you're managing your moisture, like mm-hmm. you're not getting warm enough that you're sweating, mm-hmm. you know, or sweating much, um, most of your, uh, moisture is lost breathing, mm. right? Because your body's got to heat that cold air, um, mm. When it comes in, so it picks up a lot of moisture. So, you know, think about like in the winter when you breathe, like mm-hmm. it's clouds of vapor going out. Yeah. Um, so uh, staying hydrated, um, you know, electrolytes are never bad, you know, but, yeah. but it's, you're not sweating as much in the winter as you would in the summer. Like the summer, they're mandatory, mm-hmm. right? Or you're going to end up with muscle cramps and yeah. all that kind of thing. But, uh, uh, in the winter, because a lot of it's lost through vapor, you're not losing those electrolytes out of your sweat. Because mm-hmm. I'm going back now to the time that we were in the Dax. Uh, we did our first winter camping. And it was my first climb, I think in the winter, up yeah. to Mount Seward. Yeah. Um, so a couple of interesting things is that when you go hiking or backpacking, in this case, we had a base camp, so we were hiking for the day. Um, and it was pretty much an all day thing. Um, you know, it's not like in the summer, you know, where the trails are, you've got a ton of snow, the markers might be gone. Mm-hmm. So in that case, we were pretty much relying on other people's tracks, weren't we? Yeah. To go where we wanted to go, not knowing if it was the right path, unless we were using the map the whole time. But the point is that things are a lot different. So you got to make sure you've got your navigation. You got to just plan things out, not just go. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that was a lot of moisture management. It was pretty good, mm-hmm. you know. And it didn't help. Like, it was not a super, super cold day. Mm-hmm. Um, but the big issue we did run into um, is the snow coming down because you get snow in your hair. Yeah, uh, and if you're hot, then it... it just Because you're putting out heat, right? You know, and you're managing yeah, that, your but then when you get... The, your hair gets all wet. Yeah. And, and then it's cold. And yeah, that was an interesting thing. And I remember being... we we I guess we were... Because it's over 5,000 feet, right? No. What was it? Uh, about 42, 43. All right. It's high. Yeah. So, and I think we climbed 1,600 feet. Oh, it was more than that. Was it? No. Yeah. I don't remember. Anyway, point is, is that you're up there and you're like, I shouldn't be here. <laughs> you want to turn around. And there's some interesting videos that people have put out in the DAX so over 5,000 feet, you know, above the tree line. Because I was just above the tree line when we got there. And... um and you see these videos with massive winds and it's almost yeah. like they're in the Arctic, right? On top of the mountain and, and, and it's, it's something like it's, it's like it, it looks very Alpsy or Nepal or, you know, cause everything's 
white. It's windy. Oh, yeah. And, you know, people take videos. You can't hear a word they're saying. Yeah. It's so crazy. <laughs> Pretty much. But it's 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 something, right? And I know I was afraid of tree wells, right? Mm. I was looking for that. Um, a tree well is when, um, as the snow piles up around a tree, there's a an opening underneath an opening the, it, yeah, the coniferous trees. That like sometimes the, people can slip into, right? Like you fall in. And it could be as deep as eight feet. Yeah, because if you've got all these branches, right, with open, you know, like the, the branches with needles will hold snow. Um, and then underneath is kind of protected. Yeah. So you end up with this really open area. Now, the plus of tree wells is they make good little insulated... Uh, Huts. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So it, they might, might just hang out there. <laughs> you know. <laughs> warm up. <laughs> yeah. But how do you get out? Well, you need a shovel. Mm. Right. You dig your way in which, out. In which everybody should have a shovel. Yeah. Yeah. If you're if you're out, um, definitely if it's backpacking or winter camping, pulling a sled, anything like that, you should definitely have a shovel. Um, you know, like a collapsible, you know, avalanche shovel. They're really useful uh, because it can clear your camp. It can, you know, uh, obviously you don't want to set up on deep snow, set your tent up and then sink into it. Mm-hmm. Right. You want to get down to firm. Yeah. And you, in a way, uh, as you shovel out an area, it becomes like a wall. Yeah. So it acts as a wind break. barrier. Yeah. Um, and you know, and if it is really windy, you can use the snow to build up even more mm-hmm. of a windbreak. Yeah. You know, like a, a sheltered area. For sure. And it helps to keep the, uh, and when you get the fire going, it melts a little bit and solidifies, but it also becomes, uh, retains the heat. Yeah. Right. So yeah, we were, um, that was an interesting, I didn't even want to go all the way to the top cause it got so, um, narrow like i the path was gone the trail was gone right there wasn't that ledge anymore and although you could just make your own i I don't know i didn't like that Mm. (laughs) i knew i was really high up and i felt like i was over a cliff and i probably was but um now you had another instance where you were um was it in the dax and you guys were at the top of a mountain and all of a sudden you couldn't see anything and so you roped everybody. Do you know what I'm talking about? And yeah. you had to come back by compass. So talk about that. What happened? Yeah. So basically just blizzard conditions. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and this is where having rope with you is useful. We didn't have harnesses or anything because it wasn't like we were, you know, alpine climbing. But I always yeah. have, uh, you know, like 50 feet of rope. So I basically just tied loops so everybody could get us to you know, have a loop around their waist and everybody could be kind of connected. Mm-hmm. So you just don't lose people, mm-hmm. right? It's more a leash than, you know, any kind of safety thing. Yeah. And... Does it matter how far everybody's from each other? Um, no. They they can... Basically, when you got four people on 50 feet of rope, they can only be so far apart. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just wonder from, is it ideal to have them, you know, in case one person falls over a cliff, you don't... Yeah, well, we didn't even have ice axes to be able to self-arrest. Mm. So if somebody fell over the cliff, you know, um, you were all going, uh, no. Cause if everybody, the whole thing is, is just everybody falls down on their ass mm. and plants their heels, mm-hmm. you know, but the, the only person that's going to fall is whoever's front in line. Mm-hmm. And that was me. Right. And I was the one navigating. So it was basically, so that didn't happen, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and Obviously, when you have blizzard conditions, your your footprints, because we were going back the way we came up, Yeah, your footprints are covered very quickly. Yeah. So uh, the key comes in, though, um, if you don't have electronic navigation like a GPS, mm-hmm. um, is uh, I uh, take readings from my compass regularly. Mm-hmm. So if you want to, and then write them down in my little notebook. Mm-hmm. Um You know, when I was on that particular trip, like a lot of times, you know, it's like, oh, look, there it is, you know, whatever. Um, But I'd actually had some reading. So then you can just 180 degrees from that is reverse Mm -hmm. and you just follow it. (laughs) Um, Because once you're down a little bit, Mm -hmm. now you're starting to follow some of the terrain, right? Because, you know, you think about all the, the... 
uh, you know, the routes and the DAX that you've been up. Mm-hmm. Once you're sort of starting your way down, because most of the summits are pretty flat. Yeah. But once you're starting your way down, then it's kind of following an obvious down path. Yeah. Right. But it's just figuring out where that entrance to that is. Yeah. Yeah. And we were talking to, um, so we're, a lot of, and that was in the DAX, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for folks who don't know where the DAX is, it's... Um, Upstate New York. Yeah. Lake Placid. Right. Area, yeah. Yeah. So there's something called the 46ers, 46 mountain peaks that are over 5,000 feet. 4,000. Oh, okay. I thought it was 5,000. No, anyway. there's only two, two or three over 5,000. Oh, okay. And um, anyways, uh, yeah, so these are some real conditions. And until you do it, you don't realize what's there and what could happen. Um, and that's the problem is, is when you're up there and it's flat and you can't see anything. Mm-hmm. You could easily go over an edge. Yeah. Because it's whiteout conditions. And, you know, uh, we were talking to Scott Van Leer. He's, um, I think he's retired now, but he was the ADK ra- uh, ranger out there. He was one of them. Yeah. A vet. He's been been doing it for quite a few years. And we sat down with him a few years back and, and when we were down there and we just chatted about stories. And you can find that episode. Uh, yeah, we'll put it in the link. But it's a, it's a really good episode that talks about safety. Yeah, because most of their biggest issues all come in the winter. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. The helicopter rescue, the, oh, the, the, the 36 people to carry one guy off of Saddleback. You know, like a lot of these big rescues. Like... Everything in winter makes everything slower, harder, and more dangerous. Mm-hmm. Don't like, and we're we're saying this to educate, not to scare you. Yeah, right. Because um, winter stuff's awesome, like winter camping. Yeah. Um, you know, but it comes with an inherent risk. You know, like because think about it in the summertime, if you went on a hike, you know, uh, you couldn't find your way back to camp. You could sit at the base of a tree overnight till the sun came up the next day and find your way back and survive. Right. Yeah. You're not doing that in winter without the right gear, uh, you know, and, and sort of know how. Yeah. So it, it, it is a little bit more advanced, but, um, you know, you've, you've now had quite a few different winter camping experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, and everything from like, uh, you know, like a lean-to shelter at minus 40. Oh, God. Yeah, um, that's the one I think that shocked everybody. <laughs> that was my first time camping. It was my first winter camping trip. I think yeah. it was. <laughs> Leave it to Winston. Go hard yeah. or go home. Yeah, that was um, with another guy that we know, and we went out to Queen Elizabeth Wildlands. It was um, over the Christmas holidays. It might have even been, it wasn't New Year's Eve, but it was around there. Um, And we were I think the plan was just maybe one or two days. It was, yeah, it was just basically the idea it was an overnighter. Was it an overnighter? That's it? Okay. Yeah. yeah, maybe because it was my first time. But the idea was not to have a tent. I don't even think we brought the tent. No. It was just to create a shelter and a fort outside. So wilderness survival. Yeah. And and we had materials to do that. Um, we had a big saran wrap thing. Yeah. So one of the tricks is like we built a lean-to out of um, sticks uh, and a good size lean-to. Like we found a bunch of standing dead trees, mm-hmm. um, you know, that were like perfect poles, mm-hmm. um, you know, with the saws, chopped them up, uh, attached them, you know, created a frame. Uh, and once we had sort of the frame in place, then we th- threw a, a big clear painter's drop cloth over the whole thing. Oh, making that's kind what of we did. Yeah. making kind of a greenhouse. Yeah. And then you backfill the backside of the lean to with snow to insulate it. Mm-hmm. Um and then we started a fire in front of it. Yeah. But just to um <clears throat> step back a bit here, when we got out of the car, it was fucking cold. I remember that. Oh yeah, like there it was, was kick you in the nuts cold. Like Brooks's car didn't heat well in the back. <laughs> I don't know why, but it just didn't. And it was, um, I think we got out of the car. It was around minus 25. Yeah. Which is what we expected to camp in. And I would have been fine with that. 
Um, and I remember getting in the car and I had to stop twice because I knew to start off cold and it was fucking cold and I was, you know, fiddling with my, because I have knee braces at the time I was using them, you know, and your, the dexterity in your hands were cold, right? So you just want to get the fuck going. <laughs> so we finally get going. And, um, so minus 25, I was already thinking, okay, this is good. I can handle this. And it was fine. And so the trick to when you're when you're camping like this, you got to keep moving your mm-hmm. whole day and you don't have to like run a marathon, but you just keep moving. Drudge. Yeah. So we we snowshoed in 45 minutes, um, found a spot close to the lake. And, um, and I remember it was fine. Like I was at this point quite warm. I unzipped my jacket. I even took my gloves off and we were basically setting up camp. So all this work that goes into, you know, you could bring your own tent if it's a winterized tent. No, you need to do that. You should have that. And you could probably explain that in a minute. But I'd rather build a fort because then I'm entertaining myself mm. than just build a tent and then like, okay, then what? Yeah. Okay, get some wood. But then you're always looking for things to do and then you're always cold. Mm-hmm. So I'd rather keep moving, you know, because the day is more interesting. Um, yeah, so I remember we were looking at each other and you're like, okay, this is enough. And, and it was getting windy and you were a little bit concerned. So we're like, Brooks and I are looking at each other like, no, we're going to build a higher wall here. <laughs> no, we're going to get more wood. Yeah. Good thing we did. Cause you underestimate all the time and we used it all. And, um, yeah. Can you talk about winter tents for a second? Like, uh, at what point, at what temperatures do you need a winterized tent? Or can you just talk about the different kinds? Yeah. So, so I think a lot of people would have brought their summer tent. Yeah. And uh, so basically you'll run into the thing where a three season tent, which is what most people will use in the summer, um, fairly lightweight, um, will stand up to windy ish conditions, especially if you peg out with extra guy lines. Um, but it's not designed to have weight put on it. Um, whereas the winter tents, aside from, uh, and this is like what we'd call cold tenting. We'll get into hot tents in a minute. Um, the winter or alpine tents, uh, instead of all being bug netting on the inside, will be a, another layer of material. So they actually keep a little bit more warmth in. But most importantly is they're super heavy-duty poles. You'll have more poles. The poles are thicker. So it stands up to, like, if you have a blizzard, you know, torrential snow coming down, um, it's not going to collapse with that snow on top. Mm -hmm. Um, And you're also going to run into the thing where um, if it's super windy, it's not going to crumple in the wind, right? They're meant to, to take more abuse. Right. Right. But they're heavier. Um, but that's the whole thing in winter, you know, the tent will be a little bit heavier, it's sturdier, it's a little warmer, like it'll, it'll retain more of your body heat. Mm -hmm. And the more people you can stick in a tent, the warmer it'll be because everybody gives off a certain amount of heat. Oh yeah. Um, it was interesting because again, we thought it was only going to be minus 25. So it turns out it was pretty close to minus 40. Yeah. Like overnight. And I remember I had internet. And I think I had some pictures of what we were doing today. People were like, what the fuck? You need to come home. Yeah. <laughs> like I had people like pleading with me not to sleep overnight thinking I was going to die. Yeah. Right. Like everybody thought I was crazy. My, my colleague at work who Maria who was in Mexico, she was showing everybody my, cause I had a photo of my eyelashes all, you know, yeah, like frosted out. It was like that Nat Geo graph, you know, yeah. like an Arctic Explorer. Exactly. <laughs> I should put that as uh I promote this on uh, Instagram. Uh, I should put that photo out. Yeah, yeah. So anyways, um, it was a lot of fun. But it was minus 40. And lo and behold, my t- I took a sleeping bag that was three-season sleeping bag. Argue, my, argue, arguably yeah. a summer sleeping bag. Okay, it was rated took, minus two. Yeah. With so, a liner. With a liner, which took me to minus right. 17. And something like that. Yeah. So not 25. And I thought... What was my justification? Okay. To come we figured my 17, you're fine. And then if we add in what? Uh, you're sort of the heat from the fire. We're going to have a special fire. We're yeah. going to have like this makeshift little greenhouse. Yeah. We should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> that was interesting. 
So I don't think I didn't think I was going to sleep that night. And I. But we guarantee you did because you snore like a dime chainsaw. <laughs> So, okay. And one of the one of the ways that everybody, you know, just listeners so that you know um uh how much I love this woman whether it's in bed on a daily basis or or that night, she's snoring and I don't want to bother her. She needs her sleep. So I don't wake her. I just like I just sort of lie there, you know, with this like, <laughs> you know, somebody did like starting a chainsaw next to me. <laughs> And I just go, it's like, man, she really needs a rest. <laughs> Which is funny because, okay, so let me paint the scenario. So we've got this lean-to. We've got the painter's cloth at the back. It's all packed in. Like we're trying to, and we've got these, we've dug out our, you know, our little uh, place where we put the lean-to. So we've got these walls, yep. right? We tried to create some seats and we got the fire. And this fire is called a Siberian log fire. Yeah. Do you want to explain what kind of fire this is and why you chose that? Yeah, it basically uh, directs the heat forward, which because we only want to keep the lean-to warm um, instead of heat going in all directions. Um, so it directs it and it burns for a long time without needing tending so you can sleep. Uh, and it's called a log fire because most of the wood you use is literally full six-foot logs. Um, uh, if you want a really great... Um, videos on how to do one um, on YouTube. There's Survival Russia. He's got like a whole bunch of these um, on how to do Siberian we'll log fires. Because because yeah. I think he I don't think he lives in Siberia. I think he's in Russia, but I think it's pretty close to like Finland or something like that. Okay, but they get the winter, <laughs> <laughs> so he knows. Yeah. So we had that going, and that was how far from our sleeping area. Uh, we also didn't want to. Burn. So it's, but that's why you have the drop cloth hung over the front mm-hmm. of the the front of the the lean to, so that any of the sparks hit the drop cloth, mm-hmm. and they don't hit our expensive sleeping bags. No, I got mine a burn. No, that was your uh, packing. Yeah, well, that that was your sleeping pad. Yes, when I was packing, yeah, I got too close, and I anyway because you wanted to stand by the fire while she was packing up <laughs> with her inflatable <laughs> sleeping pad. So again, how far are we? Uh, I put it four feet from the front. Yeah. So we were like little rotating sausages because we all took turns when we were sleeping Yeah. to one person at the front, middle, and and we would rotate through. Yeah. Whose job was it to stoke the fire? Whoever whoever was closest to the outside would be the one that got up. Right. Because they were going to have a shitty sleep anyway because they were going to be cold. Um, but they would also know when it's cold because then they weren't getting the heat from the fire. That's true. So they were the the the, alarm the early clock, yeah, <laughs> essentially right. So I remember when we were going to sleep because I was fine all throughout, like mm-hmm. moving around, eating at the fire, like as long as I was doing something. But when I went to lie down in my summer <laughs> sleeping bag, um, I was like, um. I started shivering. Like I, I don't usually shiver, and and so if and that was were, long before the Ed Sheeran song came out. <laughs> God. So and and a lot of people, if they don't realize, women have a lower temperature by what a couple of degrees than men. Yeah, like they can tolerate. Uh, like basically, women sleep cooler than guys do, so yeah. they need more stuff to stay warm. Yeah. So I just remember getting in my sleeping bag, and I was just shivering. I'm like oh shit like am I gonna wake up (laughs) you know like this is this is really weird and I remember I told you guys that so I was in the middle and um I think you gave me my little small quilt like very thin Mm -hmm. I don't know how thick it is but it's super but even that one layer added a difference and then Brooks put he was in a sleeping bag whoops and he just lifted up his legs and put them on top of mine and it was like, zhoo, I could feel like a warmth. Yeah. And I was like, it's oh. like if you're standing in the pool and somebody pees. Exactly. <laughs> and so um, it was interesting. And I, 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 I just remember saying to myself, okay, I don't know if I'm going to sleep. You guys say I did because um, I snored, but I'm going to try this. But if this doesn't work out, we're leaving. Yeah. <laughs> In the middle of the night, I don't give a shit. Or I'm going to stand by the fire. Yeah. Because obviously I don't want to freeze to death. Yeah. Right. Well, we're not that far out, you know. Like no. 
And um, yeah, that was, and I remember the next day. So we got up and we left. As soon as we got up, I'm like, let's go. <laughs> I think I, you know, I was fine about it, but I'm like, yeah, yeah we're going. And um, <clears throat> we went to eat. Um, and we were at a restaurant and I had the biggest breakfast ever. It was like the trucker special. Yeah. <laughs> and it was everything. And I don't think I ate, I've never eaten that much. Okay. I felt like a bottomless hungry pit, yeah. which is how, probably how you felt Yeah. after going through what you did. And my body was sore. Yeah. I remember that. Cause there, there was a whole lot of like tensing. Sh- I think it was a lot of tensing and yeah. shivering just to keep warm. Right? Yeah. So can we now market our freeze your ass off fat loss program? <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, great way to create a caloric deficit. <laughs> um, you know, we probably have to combine that with some like appetite suppressant drugs because you're hungry as shit afterwards. But yeah, yeah, that was that was an interesting experience. So yeah, kind of type A or type two fun. Type two fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, because that was the most from a, a challenge standpoint of the temperature. That was the most extreme winter camping thing you've ever done. Oh, yeah. And it was the very first time you ever went. Yeah. So now everything seems easy. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. You got, you got I, yourself like a way warmer sleeping bag. You know, I was and I was really hoping last year and this year, if we get enough snow to camp in the backyard with the kids. Because I, I remember I did it two or three years ago with the kids at the yeah. Nana's. And they just, um, we had to go home because one of them had growing pain. Right. Um, one of them had growing pains. Speaking of the microphone, sweetie. I was checking on the dog. Oh. She's fine. Yeah. And We're uh, dog sitting, by we the ended way. up going home, um, which was too bad because that would have been cool for them. Mm-hmm. And it was only like zero degrees, so yeah. it was nothing to, to worry about. But um, yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that we'd always suggest, and this is whether you're ca- winter camping Um, going on a day hike in the winter, like snowshoeing, cross-country skiing. Um, Read our articles on the website, livewildradio.com, or listen to our episodes about the 10 essentials for hiking. Because particular, like you should never go on a hike without them, but you definitely shouldn't in the winter, Mm -hmm. right? You should always have lighting, right? It gets dark early. You should always have a way to start a fire. You know, you should always have a first aid kit, (laughs) You should always have communication. You should always have navigation. Extra food, extra clothes, which you're taking quite a bit, but that's just the way it goes. Because here's the thing, your most accidents happen or people getting lost or having to be rescued are on, I, th- I would imagine, on day trips yeah. where they didn't expect to spend the night. And as we've said earlier, to do it in the summer is one thing, to do it in the winter is a whole other thing. Yeah. And that can be pretty scary. Yeah. You know, uh, because like in the episode we talked to Scott about uh, the people who got lost in the blizzard on the top of Mount Algonquin. Mm-hmm. Um, How long were they out there for? Three days. Oh my God. Three and, days without and, camping and, gear because they fell in a tree well. And they were just hiking. Yeah. So they was, had no food. Uh, they, they had snacks. Like they had a good amount. Like they were well equipped. Like basically what they didn't have was like a satellite communicator mm. right because only facebook messages would get out um you know or facebook posts mm-hmm. um which is sort of a weird thing about data and the internet like somehow facebook gets priority but uh yeah but that's the other thing too with your cell phones and batteries you want to keep that um not in a bag on your back you want to keep it inside in, your coat yeah. where it's warm because batteries don't work like a shit below zero do they drain quickly at when it's cold? Um, effectively, but then you warm them back up and then they have to charge again. And they're fine. Okay. Yeah. It's like the cold slows them electrons down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know it's not that, but it's fun to say. I just picture the electrons were like moving really fast and then they're just really slow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's like having all of that gear with you. It doesn't have to be like a massive amount, but like bring, if you're going cross country skiing, bring a puffy jacket. So if you... You know, because you were working hard, yeah. so you weren't wearing much clothes. So you stop for a break, a puffy jacket to throw on. on. Yeah. Just you to retain you, that heat. You, you got to remember you started off cold, right? So eventually you're going to cool down pretty quickly. Yeah. You know, so it's all of these little things, especially as you get more fatigued, your body doesn't have as much energy to keep you warm, right? Yeah. Um, so it, 
just that little bit of preparation um, in a small backpack. Before you go and do something, you know, before you go out camping in the winter, camp in your backyard, dial in your gear, make sure things work. Yeah. Before you go on a massive big hiking trip in the mountains or somewhere further, do it locally. Make yeah. sure that what you have works for you. Test it out at various temperatures. Um, and then you got to look at the climb, the, the recent uh, swings in climate, right? You've got sometimes temperatures are swinging 15, 10 to 20 degrees. In a day. In a day. And and it's one thing if it goes like on, on that, uh, at Queen Elizabeth Wildland where it went to minus 25 during the day to minus 40 overnight. Mm-hmm. But at least it was still cold, below mm-hmm. zero. Mm-hmm. But when you have, like on Monday this week, it was like minus seven, and the next day it was plus six. And it's raining. Right. Now, now you're soaked. You know, because um, even with all the best clothes, when it's just raining all the time and everything's yeah. sloppy and everything's melting, um, you really got to you know pay attention to that. Because you could have perfect winter conditions. This happened to our buddy David Lee. He was down in the DAX. And because it was only a few degrees below zero, the next day it got warm um, above zero and it rained. Well, because all the the rivers were frozen, all the streams, all of a sudden you had these rivers of water, you know, because everything's draining from up high down in the valleys. You had these like mini flash floods because they weren't down in the streams. They were running on the ice on top. Uh, and he had this point where they were stranded. <laughs> Because, you know, basically there was a river that wasn't there when they came in. How did he get out? Uh, I think they sort of went upstream or downstream till they could find an area that was narrow enough to jump across. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. And if anybody's ever experienced uh, rushing water. Yeah. Even at ankle height, it can knock you over. Yeah. So you can imagine if you got Rushing water on ice. <laughs> fuck. You yeah. know, it's not the place that you want to be. So... I feel like we could continue this conversation, but I think this is a good time to stop as far as. Yeah. You know, you know. and I think it's one of these things because it's still technically winter. We're recording this in the middle of January. Um, yeah. Like basically let us know what the, where you are and what your weather conditions are like. <laughs> Cause ours are shit. Yeah. You know, I've been still like we, we had freezing rain today. Um, but the last few days, like, I've ridden my bike to work comfortably. Yeah. You know, um, it's still not. I, I, I haven't, I've worn my winter boots once or twice. Like, over New Year's, we went to Montreal and we both took sneakers. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> it wasn't cold norm. enough. Yeah. You know. Definitely isn't there. We had to cancel fireworks because it was raining. Yeah. But anyway, I think uh, uh, Hazel's Hazel. telling us to go for a walk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we got Hazel the dog we're sitting saying, fuck off, guys. Go to bed. Yeah. Or take me and pay attention to me. So, uh, yeah. Work hard. Play dirty.